So uh, this is a, a late review of uh, these particular sneakers and um, I didn't pull the trigger on them back when they were available. I think it was around April, May time, uh, maybe even March. And the reason being is I bought the red reimagines and the military blues. So I kind of thought, now nah, I'm not gonna spend you know full price on any other trainers. And then on end clothing, they had these ones on sale uh, with an extra, I think it was 10 or 15% off. So the price came in at 120 pounds. So for me at that point, it was worth it. They still had a, a lot of uh, stock. This is a, a women's uh, size and uh, it's the Jordan 4 Retro and in the Vivid Sulfur. And these were originally released in uh, 1989. So it was one of those trainers that was early on in uh, Michael Jordan's career and uh, was made as a, a basketball trainer. And uh, this trainer was created, uh, designed by uh, Tinker Hatfield, which is a legendary designer of uh, Nike and uh, designed a lot of these sort of Air Max trainers and pretty much all the Jordan trainers up to 15 and then some later models as well. So with the details for this particular pair of Jordan 4s, it comes in a white coconut milk, vivid sulfur and anthracite colorway. So the anthracite isn't a full on black color, it's kind of slightly more on the gray side. And then I'm, I'm guessing the coconut milk is this midsole color here, which I'm not too much of a fan of. I'd prefer it to be white. And these have a polyurethane uh, sole, uh, midsole, with an airbag in the, in the heel and also in the forefoot. So obviously the heel version is uh, um, uh, visible and much of these sort of 80 sneakers did have sort of visible air units and also early 90s. And uh, the trainer is all sort of leather materials. It's not premium leather, but it's good enough, I'd say. Uh, and very similar to the fire reds that came out and also the sea foams, it seems to be a, a common theme with this particular color, color blocking. And the price on these were £190 on retail. So with the comfort and sizing, the Jordan 4s aren't the most comfortable of sneakers. Not like they're horrible to, to you know, walk in, but they are on the firm side. Uh, but there's plenty of cushioning in there in, in terms of, you know, how it sort of feels on foot. And, you know, it's kind of similar to, I suppose, the Jordan 3 in a way. And it's not like it's awful, but, you know, you will get sort of maybe sort of issues around this sort of pinky toe area. Uh, with this particular pair, I put my foot in, obviously I widen the laces, uh, I have a wide foot, it seems to be fine, but uh, sometimes you can get sort of pinky toe issues with these Jordan 4s, and that's what kind of makes it a bit uncomfortable. And I suppose they're a bit on the sort of more heavier side as well, so they feel a bit more chunky than normal. And because they're basketball trainers, and I think they're quite sort of ahead of the time really, they have really good sort of arch support in there as well, as you can probably see, and it's sort of quite sort of contour to your foot, and it also has this... Uh, gusseted tongue in there as well so it kind of locks you in place and feels nice on foot. The wearing time for these I'd say probably 6 to 12, 12 hours. The Like I said because of the leather material not being too soft it's on a sort of thicker side and I, I feel it's got kind of this almost sort of lacquered sort of finish on it. It's uh, on the matte side though but I can kind of feel it's uh, sort of more smooth than usual in terms of its leather material. Uh, the leather material feels slightly on the sort of thicker side in, in my opinion but I could be wrong on that but it you know it's, it's okay it's good good enough. And I would recommend going up half size uh, for wide footers. I think uh, if you're, you know, going with a narrow foot, you probably go true to size. Uh, but even then, because they run quite sort of narrow on on this side, on your forefoot, on the pinky toe area, then I, I do suggest going up up half size. But obviously, if you've got a really narrow foot, don't don't bother. Just go true to size. And because of the herringbone traction on this, this has really good, great grip in my opinion. Um, I've never had a problem with these because they sit sort of low to the ground, and there isn't much sort of room to. You know, in terms of sort of the spacing or the way the, the the midsole is shaped, it's not in the curvature angle, it's very much sort of flat to the ground. So you're not really going to slip around on these. So with the look and style, I do like the classic and timeless design for these. I mean, I'm just a big Jordan 4 guy anyway, and uh, I think it's one of the best Jordan silhouettes, if not the best. And, you know, probably the other one is the Jordan 1. And with this one, the reason why I bought it is I like the OG uh, fire red colour blocking and it's just one of those ones where I just like the way this particular colour blocking looks on the sneaker and it's, and it's similar to like the military black as well I guess and the military blues but what I like about this is because you've got the black wings and the black heel tab and the midsole as well you have that nice sort of contrast and I'm quite happy with the rest of it being white and then you've got the black netting it kind of makes it look uh, a bit more aggressive as well I guess. 
and I would say because it's a predominantly a white sneaker, it's not that you couldn't wear them in the winter, but you know, you probably end up getting them dirty quite quickly. So I think a spring autumn time is good, you know, especially sort of in more sort of chillier days uh, where you need something slightly more warmer. And this one's more of a casual wear sneaker, you can't really dress them up smart, smart. it's got a very sort of street wear vibe to it, and uh, you know, works well in that front. And I would say with this one, because you've got the coconut milk midsole, you could probably put in sort of sail laces, uh, even yellow as well, and obviously black and, and the white that come with it. So with the final thoughts, I do like the uh, fire red colour blocking. Like I said earlier, I'm just a big fan of like, this type of colour blocking and it just looks really nice on the feet. And because you've got predominantly white sort of upper, these wings really do hit and so does the heel tab as well because it's that contrast of black on, on it. And then you've got the little hits of the Vivid Sulphur, which is yellow. Um, when you see in pictures, the yellow looks a bit more sort of more on the mustard side, I guess. Uh, but in hand, it's not so bad. And I think it actually looks quite nice. Um, so, you know, everyone can sort of see a different type of uh, colour, I suppose, and, and the shade of colour. But for me, it's not too bad when I see it in hand. And like I say, because it's a neutral colourway being predominantly all white, um, it just works well pretty much with anything really, with any kind of outfit. The cons, I think the cost, £190. Like I mentioned, the leather quality on this is okay. You know, it's not nothing too special. It's quite, feels quite sort of thick, but at the same time, I expect it to wrinkle quite quickly. So just be wary of that. And like I said earlier, just not a fan of this sort of sale coconut milk midsole. I think it kind of throws the sneaker off a bit. I would have preferred it to be white because everything else is white on the sneaker. And I'm just used to seeing the fire red colour blocking in with the white midsole. So with the look and style, I'll give this a 4 out of 5. I think uh, for me, it's one of those ones where it's not as nice as a fire red colourway. And uh, obviously that's an OG colourway and uh, still just sort of pops. And I think it's just a, a star below that. It still looks nice, you know, as, as a sneaker. If you can't get the fire reds, then obviously it's a good alter alternative. So is the sea foams. And the comfort, I'm going to give it a 3. It's not like it's awful. It's just a just very kind of, you know, nothing to shout about really. It's still, you know, comfortable enough. Um, but obviously after a long day, you know, you will feel tired in these and have a lot of fatigue. And the quality, I'm going to give that three. I think uh, the, the job in terms of the, the way the sneak is constructed, I can see sort of glue marks around this sort of heel tab where this sort of be stitched in as well. And like I said, it's more mainly sort of the leather. I'm just not sure how that would hold up. I know with the fire reds, they do sort of tend to crease quite quickly. Uh, and this feels similar to what's on the military blues as well. So it's okay. It's not going to be amazing. And the pricing, I give that three. Just think because of the quality of the leather, and just in general, Jordans are really sort of too high in price. So these should be lower, in my opinion. But overall, I'll still give the sneaker a four out of five. Like I said, if you haven't got the fire red colorway, and you know you're kind of after something which is with a similar sort of scheming, then this is obviously a, a, you know a good to go kind of trainer. So especially if you're into your Jordan fours, and it's a nice one to have sort of for everyday wear. So uh, in my eyes, it's still a nice bit of sneaker, especially if you can pick it up on sale, which is what is currently happening at the moment. 